Hey guys, uh, welcome to this latest live. We're here for 30 minutes. If you've not joined me on one of these before, I'll try and answer as many of your questions as I possibly can. I won't be able to get through all of them. It's never the, the case that we can, but I'll do my best. So if you are here now, get that question in early and hopefully I will get through to it. Obviously here on YouTube, over here on Instagram. So great to see you guys. Uh, I really, really enjoy chatting with you all this time when we do this. Right, already got some questions coming through. So let's have a look at those. So uh, Malaka1951 says, uh, very helpful and informative videos, emails and TV stuff. Thank you. Do you use peer-to-peer -to, -peer to get even higher interest rates or do you consider it too risky? So peer-to-peer, -peer, for those that know about it, these are essentially companies where you put your savings with them and they would then lend, use it to lend to individuals and businesses. So you're kind of lending to your peers, to other real people um, via these middlemen. And there was a big spell where there was lots of this going on. But actually, during the pandemic, there were lots of problems with this. Obviously, people defaulting on this because they didn't have the money to pay back their loans. Therefore, people missing out on the interest. And really, they've not been a part of the scene for, well, since the pandemic, if not before that, maybe a little bit. So and some people have moved out of that kind of operation completely and other of them don't exist anymore. So no, I don't do it. And I would have thought it's probably not the best thing for most people. But if you are interested, obviously do your research. Make sure, you know, hang on, but a bit quiet. Let me move the microphone a bit closer. Do your research so you are, are fully across what the risks are. And obviously the risk is you don't necessarily get any of your uh, money back because you are lending it out. There is, if you want to keep it within an ISA, uh, an innovative finance ISA, uh, which means any returns you get will be tax-free. Obviously, most you can put in there is £20,000 in a financial year. Mark North says, or Marco North says, please tell us that UK institutions are about to move easy access savers up to circa 3.5% mark. So this is off the back of the base rate of interest increased last Thursday from 3.5% to 4%. I won't go into a lot of detail here because I've covered it in the podcast today. If you don't already know, I've got a podcast. It's called Cash Chats. Short URL wherever you are in your browser which will open up in whatever app you've got is podfollow.com forward slash cash chats is right there at the top of the screen uh, i spoke about it a lot there and a video on youtube last thursday an article last thursday but effectively although we've seen this increase from the bank of england uh savings accounts uh, say banks they're not necessarily going to pass it on to you at all and if they do pass it on they're not let's bring on all of it what we've actually seen is uh a few banks offering around that 3.03 3.04 3.05 uh, rate. I can't imagine we get too much higher than that now. Maybe, maybe we're edged towards 3.1%. You never know. And if we do see, uh, as potentially is going to happen, more increases to the base rate throughout this year, up to maybe 4.5% in the summer, maybe we'll get towards that 3.5% mark. But I think that's going to be a bit of a stretch. Uh, I think where we are right now, maybe 3.3, maybe 3.4, maybe 3.5. Then the things aren't going to get too crazy on easy access, at least. Let's quickly jump over to you guys on Insta because I know obviously race through are sometimes. Uh, these comments don't, they just whiz past. Uh, Mahi Kalai says, can I get from Santander also? Uh, I missed something you said previously? Don't think so. Come back on your question on that one, mate, and I'll, I'll see if I can do it. It doesn't make sense. Uh, Shirag88 says, is it more effective to redeem American Express membership reward points to Nectar, then convert to Avios, or to convert directly to Avios? So uh, I've spoken a lot about converting... Um, Avios points into Nectar points and converting American Express points into Avios and then into Nectar to increase the value of the Nectar points. I've got a whole video and article on that if you're interested. Um, but if you actually want the Avios points, then your best bet is to convert them one-to-one -one from your uh, American Express membership war points into Avios. There's no way of boosting those up. It's just one-to-one. -one. Let's jump back over onto YouTube. Garden of Alton says, Hey Andy, appreciate your content. Do banks which is require a debit card number every time and if you switch an account but still have another account at that bank would there be any issue so really popular question here it's worth uh talking about this uh, again most bank switches not all of them but most bank switches will require a debit card at the bank you are leaving and it's a way of just basically confirming uh your account uh they're wanting you to put the long card number in and the expiry date and all those things and that's how they kind of make sure the switch happens some of them don't, but most of them do. So that's why it's always important. I've done this myself recently. My Barclay debit card had expired because I never used that account for anything really. Uh, that had expired. So I went into branch and got them to authorize a new one for me and it came through the post. Because if I ever decide I want to switch away from Barclays, use that one to get rid of it, I want to have that debit card ready. You can avoid this well by making the odd transaction every now and again with your cards. But uh, otherwise, just keep an eye on those expiry dates so you've got them to hand. 
It's obviously harder if you're opening up a dummy account, which you then want to switch because you've got to wait for that debit card to come through. And although the Royal Mail strike for next week has been postponed, you never know. Those things can come along and sort of scupper your chance of getting the card through in time. So I wouldn't wait for a switching deal to come along for you to open that dummy account. If you aren't taking advantage of any of the switching deals happening right now, or even if you are, but you're thinking, well, what happens if other ones come later on? Get that dummy account now. Get it all ready so you've got it there to switch when you need to. And the second part was, if you switch an account but still have other accounts at that bank, would there be any issues? Most cases, no. But it does depend about what those other accounts are and if they had any requirements for you to have a current account at the bank. So, for example, a regular saver. Many of the top regular savers require you to have uh, a current account. First Direct, Club Lloyds, HSBC, TSB, all those ones, you have to have the current account to get that regular saver. If you switched away that current account, that regular saver would be closed down. You wouldn't get the interest uh, and that would be obviously a bit of a nightmare. One way around this potentially, I can't guarantee it work every single time, but it should do, is to open up an additional current account at that bank if they allow that. I don't think First Direct does, but say Halifax does and Lloyds does and Santander does. So you've still got an account there. Now, whether you switch that account or your old one, doesn't matter, but you're keeping those things alive. But that's quite rare. The vast majority of things, you can have credit cards, savings accounts, mortgages, loans, whatever it might be, without having a current account. But just check the terms and conditions for the things that you have got. Derek says, is Chip a safe company to put money in? I've never done it before. Always use the big boys for savings. So Chip is, yeah, it's safe because what basically with any kind of savings account, there's a lot of the ones you'll see on the, over on the blog, becleveryourcash.com forward slash savings. That's where you'll see my best buy tables. If you're looking for the best rates, that's where you'll find them. I update it once or twice a day. Um, you'll see a lot of the names that you won't recognize them. You're like, who are these people? One's at the top. So right at the top right now, I've got Tandem, then Chip, and then Crew. Who are they? Who, yeah, you wouldn't know. The thing to look for for any place you want to put your savings is are they financially service compensation scheme protected? FSCS. That's what you're looking for. If so, your money's protected up to £85,000. Sometimes if you've got more than 85 k uh, that can be, even if it's split across different banks, sometimes if they're the same institution, it's under the same license. So do check that out. But that's more often going to be the big guys who've got more than one um, sort of name associated. These smaller ones generally their own thing. But as long as they've got that protection, if something was to go wrong, if they were to go under, you'd be able to get your money back. Uh, it might not be like the next day. It might take a bit of time, but your money will be protected, protected by the government. So from that point of view, yeah, absolutely. Chip is safe, as are all the others from that point of view. Um, again, you want to make sure it's an app based one. So same with any online banking or anything where you've got passwords for anything, not just banking. Just make sure you don't use a login and a password which could be maybe used elsewhere in case you were hacked and people might try to to get into it but that's a kind of a good broad brush thing to talk about with uh, any kind of online accounts my wife actually had her paypal account hacked yesterday uh 20 pounds they tried to take uh we caught it so it stopped anything else going through but again really really careful with those passwords um godi says Hi Andy, I've discovered you about two months ago. Now my fifth switch. Thank you for suggesting three money. So really glad that you guys are taking advantage of offers and getting this cash. As I do say, I've got a whole video on this in an article. Just be aware that when you do open a new account to switch and when you switch, you're closing the old account, it will have a short-term impact on your credit report. Again, it shouldn't be a massive problem for, for most of us that will rectify itself. But if there is something important that you're going to be applying for at some point, maybe pace out, space out, these applications. Experian said to me, do it every three months. I mean, I've done some of the same as some of you guys have done. I've done like three or four applications in the space of, you know, four to five weeks. I've done that in the past and my credit scores dropped down a little bit and it's gone back up. But again, that's me. That's maybe some of you, but it won't be the case for everyone. So just be careful with this if you are piling on doing loads of switches at once, that, you know, that you're aware of that consequence. Not a massive one, but it can make a difference and it may take some time to get back up to a level. So mortgages, balance transfer credit cards, anything like that which should take priority, then make sure they are the priority. Uh, Andrew says, what would you say is the best UK joint account at the moment? Do you have a top three? I was thinking to go with Barclays or Lloyds, maybe any advice appreciated. So joint accounts, uh, I've actually written my Metro column for next Monday about this or part of it is about this. If you get the Metro, have a look next Monday. But um, the, the my kind of top pick here for, for a joint account there's, there's lots of things you need to think about with joint accounts but my top thing is if you are using these for shared expenses and that's what most of us do with joint accounts when we're in a relationship then you'll be paying your bills from this aren't you if you're paying your bills from a single account it makes sense that it's one from santander 
There's the 123 light, which is sadly now closed in your applicants. But if you've got that one, fantastic, keep it. Or there's the Santander 123 or the Santander Edge. They both give different rates of cash back on your bills. Uh, I am halfway through a, an update of my article comparing those. I'll probably do a video hopefully next week looking at those um, to give you a sense of which one to go for. But there are calculators on the Santander website which will let you uh, put in your bills and work out how much you'll get over a year minus the fees that come with them. So I absolutely think that's a top one to go for. If you are paying the bills, the main bills, then perfect. You could alternatively, if that's not something that appeals to you, then maybe it's looking at which bank you like the best. Simple as that, right? Which app is the best? Personally, I really like Starling. Some of you I know really like Monzo. Uh, Chase isn't too bad either in terms of the functionality you get with that, although actually you can't. Can you do joint accounts with Chase? I don't think you can. I might have, I'm not sure on that one. I have to look that one up. But certainly, if you like Starling as your main account, then have a joint account with Starling. So you're both in that same ecosystem. So you're when you're moving money between them, it's really simple. It's a like, tap that button, it goes over there. And you're familiar with it and you know what's going on. So that's something to think about as well. Let's just check back on Insta. Don't like to leave you guys. Uh, Ojid says, opinion on Chase. Uh, Chase is a uh, current account which is app only. I've got a whole review on the blog and on YouTube. The review is actually a bit old now. I did it when it launched in September 2021. So I'm due to do a new one. I'm saving my uh, update until we know what's going to happen at the end of February, uh, end of this month. Because this is when for a lot of people, that 1% cash back is going to end. Originally, it is for 12 months when you sign up, which is great. One of the best ways to buy stuff right now is via the Chase debit card to get 1% back on all your purchases, but only for 12 months. They extended that for early adopters until the end of February. So we're going to see what happens because it could well be that ends. And if that ends for people, there's going to be better options out there. But if they do something new or extend it, then it's still going to be a great option in terms of your spending. In terms of the app itself, uh, it's pretty decent, pretty simple to use. It's been a re uh, sort of design recently. I've not spent a lot of too much time looking at that. So when I do my updated review in March, uh, I'll look at that in, in more detail. But effectively, it's a good app, uh, but it is not necessarily as good, in my opinion, as Starling or Monzo. Uh, ah, Nicholas says, Andy, a couple of questions on the premium BA Amex deal. When does the annual charge get taken? And two, if I drop to the basic card, does my spending on the premium count towards my companion's voucher spend? So the annual charge will be taken off your first statement. So that £250 annual charge will be taken uh, straight away. So you've got to factor that in. It doesn't count towards your spending for the bonus or for the card, but you've got to factor that in. Uh, then if you do, once you've triggered that bonus, those 70,000 points, now that does end this month, guys, I've got a whole video and article looking at this American Express Premium Plus credit card welcome deal that you can get even if you've had some American Express cards in the last two years. Uh, so check out that video because it's a great deal. It's an amazing deal. Uh, if you then, once you've triggered that bonus, you then downgrade to the free card, uh, you will get that, that fee pro rata refunded to the card. So uh, that'd be knocked off the balance that you owe. Then you're spending, absolutely you're right. If you're aiming for that uh, companion voucher with the free card, you have to spend 12 grand in the year. With the paid card, it's 10 grand in the year. But your spending as a paid card will count. So if you spent three grand in three months to trigger the bonus, you'll already be at 3,000 pounds. You'll have to spend another uh, 9,000 pounds in the rest of this year to trigger that companion voucher. Uh, Andrew says, good evening, Andy. What do you think of the crew account? Also, do you think easy access rates will increase? Great work as always. So I've downloaded the crew account and I've been playing with it. I was spending it with it at the weekend um, in anticipation of a review. And I was going to do one last week when we were expecting it to be the top savings account option. But now a few other things have gone past it. Tandem at 3.05, as I mentioned. Uh, Chip will be 3.04 from the 11th of February. Uh, then there's less, I guess, uh, you know, uh, reason for me to kind of rush that one through so i'll spend a bit of more time with the bank and i will get a review up there i do think from my first things is it looks very nice very simple to use but uh limited compared to some of those other options out there as all banks are when they start out it is new so it could be one for the future which uh, gets better at the moment i would say then you know instinctively i'm going to say stick with starling um but again it, there may be things that are, are i find which are quite good uh let's come back to insta uh oh what's going on there uh, Nathan asked about crew as well. So hopefully that answered your question there, mate. Um, keeping it simple says, I've opened about 10 current accounts and made about £1,000 and then got the £50 by registering them uh, for YouGov Finance. Thanks for all the tips and advice. Oh, brilliant. That's a great one to know about. Uh, it's a deal that I spoke about 
in my most update, most recent update on bank accounts on uh, YouTube uh, yesterday and on the blog as well. And all details are over on BeCleverYourCash.com if you want to take advantage of this. Shell Seen says, or Shell Sean says, what do you think about investing in premium bonds? Uh, again, got a whole load of content on the blog about that and a video. So do check those ones out if you are interested in premium bonds. Their rate of 3.15 is a prize rate, not an interest rate. In all likelihood, you will get less than that. You likely will get less than 3%. And the lower um, balance you have in those accounts, the lower that will be. Now, if you want a guaranteed return, then go for an account which is paying a guaranteed 3.05% like Tandem. You will get a more money from those. There is obviously always the chance, though, that you will get more with premium bonds. And people like the idea of that. They like the idea that you may well get the million pounds. You won't, but someone will. But you won't. I won't. But someone will. Uh, and that can be quite fun in that sense. And it's a bit like doing a lottery, uh, but you actually get to keep the money because it's not for buying a ticket and throwing it away. It's still in there. The only real benefit I would say for most of us though, well, not for most of us actually, for people out there where premium bonds can become one of the best options for you is if you are a higher rate or additional rate taxpayer um, because the uh, prizes uh, are tax-free. So 50K, up to 50K you put in there and any prize you get are tax-free. So if you haven't got a personal savings allowance or it's um, already gone past it, then this is a great option for you to consider there. But you need a lot of money for that to be making a difference. Uh, Splot says, what is the best five-year fixed-term ISA at the moment? Now, I don't look generally in that much detail on them, but uh, if you go, the site that I use when I look at sites is um, look for savings accounts is called Money Facts. So they will have a list of five-year fixed-term ISAs in there. Uh, G says, I made a mistake on my Lloyd switch form. Is there a way to correct it? I put the wrong long card number. Uh, get in touch with Lloyds and just see what they say. Just check it because it may well be the Lloyds, the um, the switch is going through okay. It may be you put the wrong account in. I can't remember what actually all the details you have to put in there. Uh, they might reject it. So get in touch with Lloyds and just tell them that's what's happened. I don't think you can correct it without doing that. Ifkar Ahmed says, complete savings costs £15 a month. But if you make a purchase through the website you register with, e.g. eBay, a month and upload that receipt, it gives you 15 monthly bonuses paying off that fee. All right, thanks for that. That's good to know. Um, Mystic Holder says, what are the easiest direct debits to get in place to assist in bank switching? I've got a whole video looking at that. So uh, go onto YouTube. If you are on YouTube already, after this video, search for uh, direct debits, bank switching or direct debits, Andy Webb, and that video will come up and it will give you some quick ones, some fast ones you can set up that also aren't going to be expensive. If you uh, want to do it on the blog as well, do the same thing. Go to becleveryourcash.com and search for direct debits and the article will come up explaining how that all works. Stephen says, Hi Andy, great videos and content. Today Monzo have upgraded my account to the plus version with no mention of a trial period or confirmation email. Is this ethically right? So a few people shared in the Facebook group uh, that they've been upgraded the same as you. They've given the option to sort of try this sort of more uh, premium version of Monzo. Uh, I haven't had it in my app myself. I've been sort of kept on the, on the basic one. I think that if it is a trial, then that is bad. If at some point a, 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 a payment's going to come out of your account, that is is not great. If they're just giving it to you for free, then okay, brilliant. Quid's in. See if you enjoy it. See if those extra features you get. I personally wouldn't pay for them, but if they're free, that could be a really nice uh, addition to what Monzo offers. But yeah, have a look at that. I would get on, if there's nothing clear in the app, they've not sent you an email about this as well, I would get onto their live chat and just confirm what the situation is there. But yeah, if you are a Monzo customer, it's well worth having a look in your app right now to see if you've had anything similar to what Stephen's got or what other people in the group have had as well. Uh, Rydia74 says, Evening Andy, if I switch a dummy account which is connected to YouGov Finance, will I lose my current points gained? I have 53 days before reconnecting. So I don't think you will. I don't think they'll remove the points you've already got because you've already got them. Um, obviously, the, the potential for you to uh, reconnect that account, you won't be able to do that. But you'll have a new account that you can add uh, later on. So I don't think that'll be a, a massive problem. Uh, that loud one says, Hey Andy, what a 0% rate finishes on a credit card. Can I call them to get another deal? Am I, as I believe, closing opening credit cards affects your credit score? Yeah, so a 0% card, I presume you're talking here about a balance transfer credit card, although there are obviously 0% purchase credit cards and 0% money transfer credit cards. But effectively, when that 0% period ends, you would automatically go on to the very, very expensive underlying rate. They would be more expensive than a normal credit card. And that is not a good thing. 
what you will have to do. I mean, you could call them up and you can see what they have. Maybe they'll have something. Often you get things in the post saying, here's a new card. But most of the time, what you have to do is go onto a comparison site, look at the 0% card you're interested in, in terms of the type. So balance transfer, money transfer, purchase card and do an eligibility search, a soft eligibility search. And it will give you a range of options of different balance transfer credit cards out of different credit cards at the moment and your chance of acceptance out of 10. You might find some things 10 out of 10. You're pre-approved. Apply for that. You will have a hard credit check when you apply. You apply for that and then you transfer the balance from the old card to the new card. If the rates are lower, there is obviously a risk. Nine out of 10 is really, really likely you'll get it, but there's still a chance you won't. One out of 10 means it probably won't get it, but there is a chance you will. You've got to make a call. Uh, but then you apply for that a card. There will be a credit search on that. When you close the old card, uh, that's slightly more complicated. I have spoken a lot in previous videos, so maybe sort of check that out for more information. But I've got videos talking about balance transfer credit cards, how they work as well. Uh, Andrew says, I'm thinking of opening a savings account with Tandem for the 3.05 Easy Access account. Do you rate them? Is it worth opening a savings account with them? Yeah, I mean, they're fine. I've used them in the past. Uh, be careful here though, there is a, if you're an existing customer or a new customer, that 3.05% is made up of a 2.85% rate and a 0.2% bonus, which you add on. Uh, and you actually actively have to add that on. That is for 12 months. So make sure you do that, otherwise you'll be getting a lower rate. Compound cruises, can you confirm that all tax switch bonuses or any other banking rewards are exempt from tax? So bank switching bonuses, they are tax exempt. Banking rewards, it could potentially vary by bank. So you're gonna to have to look individually at each one and see what they say. So for example, Halifax rewards, actually, although we get five pounds a month, it's actually uh, six pounds something, whatever that would be minus 20% to take it to 5%. So in theory, if you're an additional rate taxpayer, you should be declaring uh, that to get the, uh, to pay the additional uh, off that because obviously you'd be a 40 percent tax writer but other ones aren't uh cashback for example that's not um you won't pay tax on that so again it look at the different ones and see what they say sometimes it's not massively helpful in the terms of conditions but it's worth having a look uh christopher rose says you said some banks don't do a hard second hard credit search to open a second account santander and halifax could you list others that you have done that have done this tsb lloyd's natwest barclays first direct virgin nationwide uh so I can't basically, but I can tell you when I personally opened up an additional Santander and additional Halifax and additional Virgin accounts, I wasn't uh, credit checked for that. And Lloyd's as well. There was no hard search on those additional accounts. They had information about me already. They knew who I was. Obviously there were details I put in the form. They didn't have to verify my identity. That's what happened to me. Doesn't mean necessarily it won't happen to you. So just be prepared for the chance that that could happen. And also it said not every bank will let you have additional uh, accounts anyway or they won't, even if they don't credit you they might reject you so it's worth having a, a, a think about that uh c morgan 431 says what about cash app for the halifax reward hack they have a debit card option to top up so we don't know cash app i don't know what that is but so make sure if you are looking at that as a way to spend 500 pounds on your halifax reward debit card to trigger the bonus uh, rather than just do normal everyday spending which you rather you can do on a uh with a uh, get your own cashback cards for. Um, just make sure you're not aware of any other sort of risk that might come with cash app. If they allow our debit card options to top up, that's great. So thanks for letting us know. I will try and make a note of that and look at that later on. How are we doing with the time? We've got about eight minutes. That's great. Uh, Amit says, hello, is there a new student bank account video coming for 23-24 academic year? Yes, there will be, but those accounts won't be launched until the summer. So I'll do a video probably in August time because that's really when people are going to start thinking of getting a new student account. Those new offers are around. Um, so yeah, if you're going to be joining university, starting university next, spring, next um, autumn, good luck with it. But that's when the video will, will drop. Uh, Hannah Sweet says, can you do please do a segment on being smart with money, etc. Uh, company shop do membership for key workers, people and benefits that may help others. Uh, face blue smiling. <laughs> uh, I guess that's an emoji. Um, I've got lots of content on the website about ways to be clever with your cash and save money. So do have a look at that. Look through those, read some of those articles. You might well find some bits there and look through my archive of videos as well. When I first did the channel, there were a lot more money saving things. Obviously now I do tend to do more around sort of banking savings and credit cards, um, but I have got uh, plenty of my videos there. So you may find some useful things in there. 
Uh, good to view says, hi Andy, if my total interest received has not exceeded thousand pounds in each year, I don't need an ISA account, do I? No, that's right. So the whole point of an ISA is that the interest you earn is tax free. Uh, but uh, the interest you earn in any other account is also tax free up to £1,000 if you're a basic rate taxpayer, it drops down to £500 if you're a high rate taxpayer, disappears if you're an additional rate taxpayer. So if you're getting the best possible rate is outside of an ISA, then great. Uh, again, a whole video about tax on savings on the YouTube channel and how hard calls. So do check that out for more information. Uh, Andrew, again, he's very keen on questions. I'll do this quickly because it's a good question, but I tried to sort of mix through people. Um, I think there are about three Andrews on here, actually. But anyway, I'm hearing rumors that if you leave Chase, it's impossible to reopen or open an account with them. Do you know if this is actually the case? Not planning on leaving them, just wondered. Yeah, someone posted this in the Facebook group uh, today or yesterday that they can't get back into to Chase. And sadly, that's a rule they have right now that once you leave, you can't come back. That might change in the future. In fact, no bank has to let you have an account again if you leave. Um, I mean, I personally wouldn't close my Chase account even if I'm not using it because there's no benefit of closing it down uh you can't switch away from it they don't do it part of the switching service so it's not really going to make too much difference but again if you're thinking about using them don't close it down just leave it there dormant uh bf bif ki in uk says read the tsb switch do the direct debits need to have been taken out before you switch or do they have to have had at least one payment taken before they're considered active broadly active uh does mean money has to have come out of the account so I would suggest that you aim for that to happen. Uh, where we are now, you could still set up some direct debits, um, some fast ones. Again, that video that I mentioned before, that article that I mentioned about direct debits for switching, uh, you, there are some quick ones you can set up that should be okay. Dave White says, Chase is up in savings to 3%. Any better deals? Yeah, head to becleverwithyourcash.com forward slash savings. You'll find all the details there of accounts up to 3.05%. Martin says, hi Andy, I switched from a basic Santander account to Lloyd's. Now Santander are doing a switch deal. I still have a one, two, three account. How can I get a switch deal? So you can open up a new current account with Santander, um, which I would go for the everyday account, which is the free account. Nothing fancy about it. No fees you have to pay, no direct debits or anything fancy to actually for the account itself. Obviously the switch is different. And then switch maybe from that Lloyd's account you've got, switch into the Santander account if you want to. Uh, obviously, if you don't want to switch from that Lloyd's account, you'll also need another account that you can switch into Santander. And that's where things get a little bit more complicated because then there's a lot more applications you're doing, uh, which is why I said earlier in the video, if you haven't got a dummy account, just get one ready to switch. Emmanuel says, is crew the best right now to put money in at 3.3%? Actually, it's 3.03%, 3.03%, not 3.3%. And that can be beaten by a smidgen there's also i got an email about this uh, the other day even though my crew account opened i got an email saying they're actually waiting up to some people waiting up to 10 days the big wait is because so many people have applied for the account so uh again if you find you're in a waiting room look at chip look at uh tandem uh even looking at ones just below that uh who is it sure brand at 3.01 percent now we're talking very very marginal differences between them just choose the one that you like the best i would say ultimately uh, Richard says, what is your opinion of Curve Metal? I should generate my money back through cashback, so it could be worth a go. I'm not a fan, really, of any of these cards where you have to pay you know, extra every month just to get a metal card and some insurance because broadly, the insurances you can get elsewhere, probably for better value. Not guaranteed. You might find it's a really good value for things like that. And then with the cashback, again, uh, often they're limited. The amount of money you have to spend, and maybe you're spending a huge amount, and that's fine. When I did the maths before, it didn't make sense for me personally, and I think for most people. But by all means, if you're enjoying it, then that's good. Uh, Tracy says, what do you think of plans to abolish return fares on trains? Yes, yeah, so this was announced today, although it's kind of been in the, in the works for a while. The idea would be that rather than get a discount for a return fare, two singles would just add up to what the return fare would be. Now, if this means that the singles are cheaper, then that's great, isn't it? Uh, and in fact, the, the main routes that I use that's often the case anyway, that it isn't cheaper for a discount if you buy a return. And it gives you greater flexibility. I mean, there's much more, I haven't gone into detail about what, what's been announced. I think we'll wait until things come along and I'll do a big article on the blog about what that means for you. There was talk a while ago about getting rid of split tickets because it was nonsensical that that could happen um, to make just the savings just automatic rather than you have to buy all these different tickets. We'll see what happens. 
Um, blah, blah, blah. Lorna's talking about crew. Ashwin says, hi, Andy, we're reaching the point where my wife reaches uh, 12 months on her Amex gold and I have had gold one year ago. We'll have one year away from Amex. So can we get the welcome bonus after two years? What would you recommend, non Amex? So this is the idea is if you can cancel your Amex for two years and use other cards, you can then uh, reapply in two years to get another welcome bonus. And I used to do that. And I used to do the situation where we actually alternated. So I'd have a card for two years and then I closed and my wife had a card for two years and keep doing it like that. So every two years, we'd get a, a welcome bonus um, in that sense. So I would suggest that uh, one of you keeps Amex, one of you ditches it. Maybe one of you looks at the British Airways uh, Avios cards, uh, which will earn you Avios points, but they can be converted into Nectar points. Uh, gives you equivalent of 0.67%, not as much as you would get there. Or chase at 1% as a debit card rather than a credit card, but you're going to be earning uh, more than that. Although let's see what happens in the next few months. Uh, right, it's half an hour. Oh my goodness. Right, guys. Sorry I didn't get through to so many of your cards. I feel like we've done gone through loads, but maybe there's more of you than normal who have joined. Uh, if I didn't get a chance to answer your question, obviously I'll do this again in a couple of weeks, more or less, or head to becleveryourcash.com forward slash community. That is the Facebook group where you can ask a question. And if I can't answer it, then one of the 3,400 other people, and I know a lot of you guys are in there already, then you'll be able to, uh, they'll chip in as well and give you some sort of uh, help. There's also obviously a huge wealth of content on the website, becleveryourcash.com or on the YouTube channel or on the podcast as well. So you may well find that a lot of the things you've asked me today, you can find the article, the video or the podcast episode, which answers that for you. And in fact, sometimes before you even ask me a question, they're the best places to go just to see if the information is already there and probably more information than you already thought you needed. Uh, but that's it, guys. So sorry if I did miss uh, any of your questions. So do uh, head over there. God, sorry, yeah, lots of you on Insta as well. Sorry about that. Um, I will be back in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much for joining me again. I do really, really appreciate all your support. All right, guys, have a lovely evening. Cheers.